Well, hello, lovely humans, and welcome back to my channel. We have not done anything hair related in quite some time, so we are due. We are due for some sort of conversation about hair, okay? And in this week's video, I'm showing you my everyday go-to hair curling routine. It is tried, it is true, it is trusted, it is terrific, all the T words. And that is because, in my opinion, it is simple, it is straightforward, and it's not complicated the next day. Not quite sure what I mean by that? Well, then uh, you're gonna wanna watch the rest of this tutorial, and I'll explain. And we're deploying my new secret weapon for uh, sleek curls. So without further ado, let's just jump right on into it. Okay, so hopefully I'm not too far back, but I want you to, my hair's so long that I want you to be able to see all of it. Um, while I'm curling it. And also what I do like about this angle, one, is you can see the moving box that is sitting on top of the bed. Because that's where those go. But you didn't know. And two, you can actually see what I'm doing with the back of my head. Kind of. I don't know. In front of me, I already have heated up my, um, inch and a quarter curling iron, which is like my go-to size. Oh my gosh, yeah, you are not going to be able to see all my hair. How am I going to do this? How am I gonna do this? Why does this sound like a good idea? And my most recent hair, hair tool purchase, which is just a mini straightener. When I let my hair air dry, I get little curly pieces right next to my face, and sometimes I will get excessively curly pieces on the back of my head. So sometimes I'll just take this little one, which I like so much more than my larger plate straightener because I can get really close to the hairline and kind of smooth out those little extra curly bits that I want to go with the flow with everyone else. And this curling iron is Con Air. I don't know, I've had it for about a decade, give or take. It is on its way out. So I am on the market for a new one. I keep eyeballing the T3 and I just don't know if it's worth it. We will, we will, uh, we will figure that out as we go along. Turn that down because it seems a, a wee bit too harsh. Is it too harsh? Yeah, I feel like I need a little bit more. So if anyone has the T3 and you really enjoy it, let me know because I, I am definitely down to drop a pretty penny on something that I use each and every single day, but if it's not worth it, then I'm not doing it. I am now very professionally setting up a mirror atop a trash can. High quality content, let me tell you. First things first, take my little straightener and just get in here. Just get those little curly bits. All right, so I'll just kind of do the front pieces for now and I'll keep this on in case there's other pieces that I see that I want to attack as we keep going. I'm going to section off my hair. I do this because I have so much of it and it is quite long. So it's a lot to deal with and there's no way that I would get the type of curl that I would want to get if I kept it all down. And split my hair down the back, as you can see, in the back. <laughs> kind of digging this back angle, guys. Now the way I curl my hair is um, I start at the top, wrap it all the way around, and shimmy my way down the whole length of the strands. And I also curl the very, very ends as well. I am not the type to leave those ends out for a more straight, blunt look at the ends. I like for the wave and the curl to go all the way through. So it might make it a little bit less trendy, but I think it makes it a lot more timeless. I also prefer to use a curling iron because it gives me more control, and I burn myself way too much on a wand. There's, There are obviously some differences between the two of them. I feel like I can get a more structured and controlled curl and controlled results with a curling iron instead of a wand, so this is my preference. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna try to go nice and slow, right? Get your curling iron as close to the base of your scalp as you comfortably can, because you don't want to burn yourself. Let that tongue come on down, wiggle it down just a little bit, and start turning. Wiggle it on down just a little bit more, and turn again. So the point of this is to start the curl structure from the very very top instead of starting from the bottom and rolling our way up because that means most of the heat for most of the length of the time is only focused on the ends so i did leave a teeny bit down here you can kind of see that but i knew if i got too much further down i'd burn my fingers and then as you're undoing it roll it off the curling iron like that you get a perfect springy a little spiral. These are probably one inch sections, sometimes towards the bottom or towards the back. I will take larger sections simply because no one's really gonna see those, so why would I put a ton of effort into them? But again, going to get my curling iron as close to the base of my scalp as comfortably possible. Scoot it on down just a little bit and making sure to bring that tail on over. And sometimes I hold on to it because it just makes it a lot easier for me. And then watch, I will press on the tong to wiggle it down a little bit and then tighten it back up again. And I'll just keep this going until I've reached the very end of the hair strand. And at this point, this top section's been sitting against the heat for the longest amount of time, which means the body of the curl goes all the way through the hair. I know this top section will fall flat, 
throughout the rest of the day simply because I just know my hair really, really well. But at least we're giving it a, the good old college try, you know? And a little bit of a note, um, it is always better to curl your curl a section of hair twice than it is to leave it on for too long. So if you are not confident in the shape of that curl or how long you held it on there, release the curl and start over again because you don't want to fry your pretty, pretty hairs, okay? Oh man, I meant to put lip color on. <laughs> I still have foundation on my lips. Excellent beauty tutorial, Jamie. <laughs> All right, let's drop you on down for this one. This one's a, definitely a wider section probably more like two inches, but it's very thin. Getting my curling wand, or curling iron as close to my scalp as possible without hurting myself. I go ahead and clamp it down, scoot on down just a little bit to give myself a little bit of curling room, and twist. One more time. Almost like taking, doing little presses and taking little jumps down the length of hair, and then just curling it all right back up again. So, bop, 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 curl back up. And at this point, I'll probably hold for just a few seconds and then gently unwind. Oh, do I have curly stuff over here? I do. Okay. The reason I like to address this hair right here is because if I pull my hair forward, this part is very, very visible. You know what I'm talking about? Like if you were to pull your hair forward like this, you've got all this nice full beauty right here, but you can still see this part. So I like to go in there and just just clean up some of the tinier little curls. So basically I'm gonna time lapse the rest of this because it is the same exact thing over and over and over again and I feel like I feel like we've probably got it mastered at this point, right? You know, like you get the curling iron as close to your scalp as possible, yeah bap bap bap, and then curl it back up, right? Just remember the bap bap bap. <sighs> okay, cue the time lapse of me just doing this all over my whole head. figured now is the perfect time to interject this little thought. A lot of times when I watch hair tutorials, they will curl um, in multiple directions on each side. So some curls will go towards the face, some will go away from the face, and that's all good and dandy. It does really create like for a more tussled and or natural look. For me, I do not do that and I won't do that. That drives me nuts. One, because those curls seem to like form some, side of, some kind of curl gang and then mesh together and interlock themselves so it just creates a huge knotted mess on my hair that I just cannot stand. Um, and two, I like to keep a hairstyle for as many days as possible, especially when I'm doing something like this that takes like 20 to 30 minutes to do, it's gonna last me for as long as possible. In my humble and completely uneducated opinion when it comes to curls, it's just so much easier to have them all go the same direction. I would rather toss a little, little bit and throw some hairspray in it to add some texture, some volume, and make it look a lot more organic and natural than try to remember which curls go which direction because I do not have the brain space for that, okay? There are other things that are occupying that brain space and I cannot remember which curl goes which direction if I decide to uh, refresh that hairstyle the next day. closer to my face, I start taking much smaller pieces because I want these curls to be a lot more defined um, and I don't want them to be as large or as loose potentially as some of the ones were towards the nape of my neck or the back of my head. These are the ones that frame my face. So I want them to frame it nicely and well. So this is where I'll take my time just a little bit more and get these money maker pieces making money. I regret that immediately. And you can see because I've already straightened out this little piece right here, even if I got my curling iron as close to my scalp as possible, it would not have straightened out or removed those the curls that were within like a half inch of my scalp. So that's why I really, really like that little mini straightener because it just helps me to get in there and really get that sleek look going. I find that when I hold onto the ends of the strands, I have a lot more control over the curling iron 
as opposed to just kind of trying to do it like this and hope that the hair stays in the place that I want it to. If I hold it and I wiggle the clamp on down while I'm holding it, it just feels like it's going down a straight line as opposed to if I was to do it like this, if the hair fell down on the barrel, it'd be a lot harder to manage. Does that make sense? It also helps me to know when I've reached the end of the, the set of strands too. <sighs> okay, so here is what we currently have. I'm probably gonna put in a spritzer two of hairspray just to kind of help everything hold its shape But now I need the curls to cool down for anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes before I will rake my fingers through them It does mean I have a very structured ringletty curl look for now. I'm okay with that I would rather let them cool down in their current shape and then kind of mess around with them to make them exactly what I want them to be but for now we're just gonna leave them let them do the dang thing because because this has got to last me for at least two to three days all right then about about 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't know, I honestly wasn't paying attention. I just, just kind of felt the hair to see if it was cool to the touch, um, and it seems fine. So I did spritz it with a little bit of hairspray immediately following that last clip, and I tend to not use too much, just like a light spritzing seems to work out just fine for me. Um, and yes, I put a lip color on. I know you guys were concerned, but I did. So like, at least the intro and outro will be great, you know? Like, on point, just all the middle stuff. In between is a little bit more sketch. So now I am going to take my fingers and just rake through the curls and separate them a little bit. Just so we don't get Shirley Temple-esque mega curls, like those super extreme ringlets. And my secret weapon, hold please, is to flip upside down and get my fingers in there like this. And do a couple of of 80s rocker hair flips, because that really seems to do the trick for me. <laughs> if nothing else, then you just look like a complete buffoon for uh, for anyone in your household or driving by, you know? It just looks like you're really enjoying the moment. Whew. All right. <laughs> it's a little large. It's a little large. And this will, of course, settle in. It'll settle down. So there you have it, guys. It is my everyday hair curl routine. And by everyday, I mean like every three to four days, maybe. <laughs> Usually I do it like this once and then just like hope it lasts me the rest of the week until I wash my hair again, if I'm being honest. But it's pretty simple and straightforward in my opinion. I think that this is personally something that is classic and both easy to do, which is why it's my everyday go-to style because why overcomplicate things if you don't have to? And honestly, I love how the ends like continue the curl. I really do like, oh, can you see the paper towels? That's because they spilled coffee earlier. Like right before I filmed this video and I just threw paper towels on it and hoped that that would clean it up. <laughs> Personally, I love how this style carries the curl throughout the ends of the hair. If that's not your speed, feel free to leave those ends out. You totally can. I know that's very, very in right now, but I like the timelessness of the ends being fully curled, and I just think it makes for a really nice, polished-looking curl. So there you have it, guys, my everyday go-to hair curling routine. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, jump on down there, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how often you curl your hair. Are you like me? Is it like you try to keep it once a week? Are you an everyday sort of person? Let me know. And subscribe while you're here. Stick around. We'd love to have you be a part of the Wolfer Pack fam thing. Mm, gotta work on that outro. That was brutal. <laughs> and until next time, bye guys. Darling, you